I am not going to leave her. She's insulted me so much. I just cannot take this. Now I'm going to make sure her life of every moment is going to be miserable. Let her come next time. Let her come. I'm going to insult her. I'm going to abuse her. I'm going to show her how she, uh, you know, how she can be so bad to me. I'm going to really, really bash her. Let her come. Let her come. I'm just waiting for that moment. Do you really think someone is going to go about beating up somebody? No, no. We know that for a fact that she is just venting out. She'll say all these things and then probably get back into her kitchen or with her family and try to have a normal day. But will she be able to? If these are the type of thoughts that are going on in somebody's mind, what happens? How do you proceed? The first question that comes to mind is, do we have control over our thoughts? Now, Sonal had so many other things to do. Her priorities in life were different. She has so many nice people around her who have been nice to her and she is nice to them. They love her and she loves them. And she would like to do some nice gestures to them. But as you notice just now, she's stuck with these very, very negative uh, thoughts. She is obsessed with certain things which are not even going to have, uh, you know, fructify. They have no meaning. When she says things like, let her come, I will do this. How can she do this to me and all these things? Actually speaking, it's nothing. But don't forget, it is spoiling her day. If she spends some amount of time you know, grumbling, growling, making all these negative remarks, getting angry, what happens? Even when she gets down to her routine, even when she is in the company of nice and good uh, uh, people, what happens is her mood is gone. She is restless. If she is doing some work which requires concentration and responsibility, she will find that she is not in a position to give as much attention or work with that much amount of uh, efficiency as she is capable of uh, uh, doing. And more than anything else, her mood will be off. She will have nice people around her. They will be doing nice things to her. She will acknowledge that, yes, they are being nice to me. At the same breath, she will say, no, but I am not happy. These thoughts are coming into me again and again and again. So, before we proceed, let me define generally what are the type of these negative thoughts or, you know, disruptive uh, uh, or destructive thoughts that keep coming into our uh, mind. Some of the most, you know, popular ones are something like what you heard Sonal just now, that is committing some violence or harm or hurt to someone who has been bad or sometimes even to oneself. I don't deserve to live. I should be punished. I should be this. I am a horrible person. So it could be to somebody else. It could be to uh, oneself. The other type of thoughts that keep uh, coming is some sort of inappropriate behavior. I will not allow this person to do it. I will make a sarcastic remark in front of everybody. I will purposely ignore such and such a uh, person. Let him feel this. Or I will point out, you know, something very embarrassing to him in front of others and let him feel that humiliation when people are laughing at him or looking at him that way. Similarly, disruptive thoughts can be what is referred to as blasphemy. You know, sometimes when we are under so much pressure, under moral conditions, scriptures, rituals, our uh, religion, community, Sometimes the mind revolts and you start thinking very, very negative uh, things about uh, 
you know, why did this one do that? Why did that happen? Why do I have to do these? And, all? and one more area where you have these, uh, you know, negative uh, um, thoughts quite often is fear-based. What will happen to me? How will I be able to face this? If such and such thing happens, then what is going to happen to uh, me? Presuming that something negative will happen. And that leads to one of the most common symptoms, which is anxiety. The moment I start getting negative thoughts, unpleasant thoughts, disruptive, destructive thoughts, one of the most common things that is likely to happen is anxiety. Oh my, supposing this, this, this happens, then what will happen? Supposing I lose my money, then what will happen? Supposing somebody cheats me and goes away, what? how will I be able to cope with it? Supposing I develop some horrifying illness, you know, I've been getting pain here and here and here. Is it some tumor? Is it something which can lead to very, very painful death or something? So one by one, one by one, when these type of any of these type of negative thoughts keep coming, it leads to one of the first thing that it leads to is anxiety. And you know the lovely definition somebody has uh, given to anxiety. It is interest that you pay on a loan which you have not taken. Nothing has actually happened. See, anxiety is different from worry. Worry is when something is actually happened or is happening. My child is not studying and is getting low marks. And in the last two tests, continuously, his marks have been going uh, down. And he is still not understood the significance. His board exams are coming up uh, um, very uh, soon. So I'm very worried about his future. That is worry. Anxiety. Even if he gets 80%, 90%, nowadays you don't know where you will get admission. You don't know what happens. I don't think my child will get into MBBS or IIT or something. Then what will be the future? Nowadays, world has become so competitive. How will my child be able to face so many challenges in life? Things are getting worse and worse. We have had so many first wave, second wave, third wave of uh, Corona. What happens if this continues? What will happen to my child? All these are hypothetical, right? Nothing actually has happened or is you know, threatening to happen right now. But I'm worrying about it. That's why I said that it is interest that you pay on a loan, which you have not uh, taken. Khadija says sometimes people surrounding us transfer these negative thoughts. In fact, yes, that's going to be one topic I will take up later, how you know it is contagious and how it comes on to you. But before that, let me you know start off with telling you that negative thoughts can lead to if they are not tackled and if they are not overcome and if we don't you know manage to overcome them, they can lead to a lot of very, very big complications. It is like how doctors say, that when you have a fever or cold or something, don't neglect them because then it can become serious. It can become pneumonia. It can be life threatening. So many things can happen. You can get a stroke. All that can happen if you neglect what is happening right now. What is happening right now doesn't seem very threatening or very uh, horrifying, but it can lay the foundation for it. And that's the reason why today I'm spending this session entirely talking about how do we manage or how do we deal with these so-called unpleasant uh, um, thoughts. So let me be, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be a doomsday prophet and not trying to scare you guys, but I would like you to understand that continuous negative unpleasant thoughts can eventually lead to not only anxiety, but OCD, for example. Obsessive compulsive disorder. It starts with a person having continuous negative thoughts. Then those thoughts become an obsession. That obsession forces him, compels him to do things which he should not be doing. And eventually he lands up in what? 
the medical professionals call as OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. On a more wider range, it can even lead to depression. When I start thinking negative all the time, COVID will you know, spread and we'll all die. Look at the country, what is happening, what the politicians are doing. Look at this uh, you know, weather and global warming. We will all be killed one day. See how much of corruption and terrorism is going on. All this can lead to very, very debilitating uh, uh, depression. If certain things have happened to us and we are going on thinking only of those negative incidents, you may have actually had trauma. You may have actually gone through some very uh, you know, bad experiences. But constantly thinking about that and letting it affect your day-to-day -day routine can lead you to eventually what we call as PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Trauma, post-trauma. After the trauma is over, the stress still remains. Stress is cumulative. And it can lead to a disorder which doctors refer to as PTSD. In extreme cases, it goes to ADHD, that is, you know, attention uh, deficit hyperactivity disorder because the person you know, his mind is so caught up with negative things that his attention is lost. He wants to study, he wants to work, he wants to have good conversations with his near and dear. He can't do that because he's all the time suffering from that uh, ADHD. In extreme cases, rarely, but it can also lead to things like bipolar disorders and all that. So as I said, I'm not trying to scare you, but I'm just trying to make you aware that it is far easier whenever you find that I'm getting a little too many negative thoughts or they're coming to me every now and then and making me feel very unpleasant. I need to do something about it. What is it that we can uh, do about it? Firstly, acknowledge that these thoughts are automatic. You have not actually asked for them. You have not done anything wrong to have those thoughts. They come from within somewhere or the other, from your subconscious mind. So acknowledge that this is something like I'm trying to cross the road and there's this huge you know, lorry coming at full speed. I have not asked that lorry to come, but it is there. It is a threat uh, to me. Also acknowledge that negative thoughts by themselves cannot hurt me because they are not actionable. They, are not, they will not lead to action. They are not actionable. So by itself, those thoughts cannot uh, uh, cause any harm to me. Let me have that reassurance to uh, myself. And one thing that I always tell people is, don't try to dissect those uh, negative thoughts. Why did this happen? No, because that person cheated me or that person said that to me. And because at that time, this horrible thing happened to me. The more you try to do analytics, on your negative or unpleasant thoughts, the more miserable you will be. All these latest data sciences and artificial intelligence and all this cannot help you when it comes to some basic aspects of human behavior and human uh, well uh, being. Allow it to come. That is the significant thing I wanted to tell you. Don't run away from those negative thoughts. Don't try to distract yourself momentarily by saying, no, I'll watch this movie or I will read this book or I will do this cooking or I will do this or something. No, it doesn't work at that moment. At that moment, I would actually prefer if you allow the thoughts to flow. Come, float. Let them be there for uh, uh, some time and with a little bit of time, allow them to pass by. Okay, you are on your journey. You came and took shelter from me. Now you better continue on your journey. Push off. I want to relax. I want to be in a more pleasant state of uh, mind. Then, how to actually ensure that we remove or at least reduce these unpleasant uh, thoughts? There are some such basically simple tips and techniques which I am going to show you and you will feel what's so great about it. I know all this. What is Ali doing telling us something which we you know, are we small children to be doing this? But actually, in practical level, we do need it because we don't consciously practice it, particularly when we are facing something uh, difficult. We don't practice it. So what are these uh, uh, things? Let's run them uh, through one by uh, one what we can uh, do about it. 
the first one is be mindful that is get control over your mind you do it by meditation you do it by yoga you do it by prayer you do it just by you know sitting with your eyes closed and doing deep breathing but focus on your mind focus on your breath focus on your immediate environment or focus on life itself that is what we refer to as mindfulness you can google it there are 100 different ways of doing it you can start small and build on that, uh, that. many of us like music and music can be soothing if you are the type of person who enjoys a particular genre of uh, music keep it in mind and keep it available whenever you get an opportunity when too many negative thoughts are coming in see if you can put on your favorite music and see whether it helps you also getting proper sleep it's very very therapeutic those of us who are lucky that at the end of the day even if we have stresses even if we have a lot of negative experiences and thoughts in our mind but we can slowly drift off to sleep and have a sound sleep for a minimum of five six hours it is a really good therapy taking a walk what's so great about it it is great let me tell you even today it continues to be one of the best exercise you may spend thousands and lakhs on a gym you may do all sorts of fancy exercises you may play games but nothing to beat a nice brisk walk and as you saw here if you have some nice lively company on your uh, walk all the more uh, so sometimes it helps to declutter your environment which declutters your mind one of the things that i do when i feel that some negative thoughts are coming is i open my diary and start putting things in place this task has to be done i will mark it for sunday i have enough time on sunday i think i'll do that this task i think by today evening i can complete it this task i have to go and find out how to do it so i'll make a note that i will go to certain such knowledgeable person tomorrow or day after and get that so when i start putting thoughts in order tidying up and this tidying up can also be done at a physical level outside clean up your room clean up your desk or your office or wherever you are clean up your kitchen if you happen to be a homemaker tidying up helps then you move on to what we call as unfocus for you are focused on those negative thoughts actively by the time you are doing all these things unfocus that means start taking one one step away from that obsessive uh, thought tell yourself yes i know it is horrible i know that it is painful i know that it is causing anxiety but i would like to move on to something uh, different one universally accepted uh, thing on which our entire concept of counseling is based is talk it out to the right people not to somebody who either puts you down and says what you are going on this this what is so great about it i had much worse things i didn't panic why are you getting so tensed up not to such people not to people who start giving you unwanted advice but to somebody who is just willing to listen to you and empathize with you then we move on to what is known as positive affirmation i'm sure you have all heard of it i'm i hope some of you have been practicing it give yourself positive affirmation one is here right in front of you on the screen a positive affirmation to say that my happy thoughts will become my reality when i think these happy thoughts when i recall these happy experiences it will become a reality my life itself will improve i have had this good fortune i have these good qualities i have these good people around me affirm to yourself don't take it for granted but go ahead and do the affirmation to uh, that and one thing which i miserably fail in convincing people is step away from technology minimize technology artificial intelligence takes away your real intelligence don't let technology become your master it will 
definitely intrude into your pleasant uh, uh, thoughts. I wish we could do something like what these kids are doing, you know, lead that type of life. How wonderful it will be, isn't it? Show gratitude. I'm sure there have been occasion, there have been people, there have been incidents where you have received something nice. Actively put it in gratitude form. Either pick up the phone, call up that person or send a message saying that I'm so thankful and I'm so happy with you. Maybe sit down and write a letter or an email to that person in detail describing how that person has helped you and enriched you and what you feel about it. Maybe you can send an unexpected gift to somebody without any occasion. A small gift, it need not be expensive, but a small gift just to say that I was remembering you and I was remembering the good that you have done to me. So as a token of my gratitude, I wanted to give you this which may be useful to you or which may be touching to uh, you. And lastly, practice to be kind to yourself. Give yourself positive strokes. Appreciate your good uh, qualities. Give yourself some treats like this man is enjoying his favorite ice cream. Be kind to yourself. Tell yourself that even if I, I have done some wrong things in my life, right now I am okay with uh, uh, whatever I am. And I'm a, basically a good human uh, uh, being. So in general, these 11 points, I have sort of, you know, condensed or consolidated from number of things that you can do. Now, these 11 are not a portion to be completed and then written down in the examination hall. These are to provoke you and make you sit up and think about what you can do in terms of your own methodology. Maybe if just one, two, three out of those 11 are applicable or appreciable to you, use it. But as you look at the list or as you think of one or two things that you do, come out with your own. Instead of this, I will do that. I'm not very much into music, but I'm into art. I will try this. Or I'm into gardening. I will try this, 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 and I'll, you know, get the joy and pleasure of seeing some nice, lovely plants or flowers coming up. You have to find out what suits you, but it works. So these 11 points that I gave you are sort of a foundation from where you can start exploring and looking for other um, uh, alternatives. Let me also give you a reconfirmation with a few more points about how and why some of these things help you to overcome or reduce the unpleasant uh, uh, thoughts. The first one is talking feelings with a friend. Talk to a friend about your feelings more than incidents. This is the fundamental mistake that uh, we make. We talk about incidents. You saw her, how Sonal was enacting. You know, how does she dare do to me? Uh, do this to me? What happens? These? What, what is the way? What is the uh, thing. But if you can talk it out at the feeling level, I am angry, I'm disappointed, I feel cheated, this is the thing, that is what it is. The moment you start talking, you start feeling lighter and the situation doesn't look as bad it as it was earlier. Challenges. Is this really true? Is this really going to happen? Is this really affecting me? Uh, you know, uh, so much. What is a positive angle to that? Have I learned something from this? Have I gained something from it? Can I gain something from it? As they say, you know, that failures are stepping stones to success. So can I use this as a stepping stone to, uh, you know, uh, success? Think about those parts of your life which are positive. I refuse to believe that there is any adult human being who can say my life has been all the time miserable and negative. It is just that you have focused too much on the negative things. However bad life has treated you, life has also given you moments of pleasure and joy. And it's up to you whether you have actually acknowledged and even today whether you continue to acknowledge those good things that have happened to uh, 
uh, you. And then think of things which you can enjoy now. You know what happens when we are obsessed with uh, unpleasant and negative thoughts and memories? We stop taking interest in those little, little things which give us joy. I showed you in that slide, you know, you have a favorite ice cream parlor and you have a favorite flavor of ice cream. Tell yourself tomorrow is Sunday. I've got a lot of time. Whether somebody comes with me or not, I am going to go there and enjoy my favorite flavor of uh, ice cream and come back. Uh, over there. So this was just a very simple example. Like this, there are so many things that you enjoy. Make a list of them and start practicing uh, them. Telling yourself, today I will do this, this week I will do that, next week I will uh, uh, do that. Like that, if you start thinking of, you know, and implementing some of the good things that you can uh, uh, do. Also, lastly, in this uh, list, never forget the connection between the body and the uh, mind. The body if it is good and healthy, it uh, makes for a healthy mind and vice versa. So now here, your mind is becoming unhealthy because of these unpleasant thoughts. Time and again, time and again, these obstructive and obtrusive uh, thoughts are coming into your mind, which are affecting your peace of mind, which are affecting your happiness, which are affecting your you know, being able to move on smoothly in life. But how is your body responding uh, to it? Is your body fit to be able to take up these uh, uh, things? Even for physical ailments, you must have seen occasions where somebody needs surgery for something and the doctor says your basic parameters are poor. Like your blood pressure is high. I'll give you medicine. You can... Uh, you know, get the uh, blood pressure under control, then I'll do the surgery. For the surgery of the mind, for being able to set right the mind, heal the mind from all these negative thoughts that are continuously bothering you, you need a strong body. So eat well, sleep well, as I already mentioned to you, do exercise, all these things I have uh, told you. Keep away from addictive substances like alcohol and stuff. These are all the wonderful side effects of some of these uh, addictive substances, be it cigarettes, be it alcohol, be it drugs, be it ganja, whatever. It is these things really pull you down in so many ways. If you can ensure that you keep away from all these things, you will realize you are getting more and more control over your mind and your thoughts. And... The greater the control you have over your mind, the more you have control over your emotions. Never forget that emotions are a consequence of thoughts. Whatever you think leads to your feelings. And here you are obsessed with all sorts of negative thoughts. What do you think your emotions will be? you will be feeling emotions which are very, very uncomfortable. And emotion lead to action. So you may land up doing things which you did not want to uh, do. So to nip it in the bud, you have to start at the thought level. And at the thought level, these are only some of the very, very basic and simple things that you can uh, practice. Expand on it. Find your own ways of doing it and practice it regularly till you start seeing the results. After that also, even if something very unpleasant happens to you, it will hurt you for some time. You will have some negative thoughts, but you will be able to overcome it. So as we come to the halfway point, I am, as usual, you know, going to take a quick uh, break. But in the same breath, I just wanted to tell you like how they do in the TV serial, no? Okay, what are you going to have? In the next episode or break ke baad, I'm going to tell you what uh, uh, Khadija had put up right in the uh, beginning. What happens when you have other people around you who impose these negative thoughts on uh, you? you know? The type of situation where people influence or impose negative thoughts on you. How are you going to deal with that is what I'm going to start off with in the second half. But more than that, 
as always i look forward to your comments and questions please start putting them up good morning another lovely day and uh, some very simple and effective tips given by uh, ali um i just wanted to uh, tell you that of course uh, you know we keep talking about a diploma in uh, uh, you know counseling skills program and uh, that of course is a lot of uh, inner work that you do many of these thoughts emotions actions we discuss a lot of that but for people who are outside bangalore who are interested in uh, this counseling program we have uh, another program called international program in counseling and guidance so again it is uh, uh, you know the format is same of course uh, dcs is uh, you know a program which you come here and uh, participate with uh, many other people uh, this is uh, this is a wonderful program and in fact this year many of uh, uh, you know at least more than half a dozen uh, people have come from out of uh, station they are taking up a place here in rt nagar and uh, you know participating in the dcs program but for those of you who cannot come who are uh, you know living in different uh, parts of the city uh, or, you know of the country and the world also in fact this is a program international program in counseling and guidance uh, uh, it is uh, going again you know the content is going to be uh, uh, similar to our dcs program but it is a self paced uh, learning mode what we'll do is the most wonderful part about this program is we will give you a mentor so an exclusive mentor throughout the year uh, and uh, you are uh, that uh, mentor will help you uh, mentor is also going to be a counselor so uh, you can uh, you know all these thoughts that ali was talking about and all of that you can uh, discuss with your mentor you can go out there and uh, learn the skills uh, and the mentor will be there to take you forward in that so it's self paced and uh, the best feature is the mentoring program we are going to do a webinar on uh, 12th of february the details are given here so those of you who want to know you know how i can take this forward uh, whether to you know work uh, on yourself or uh, to sir, you know reach out to others this is a wonderful program so please reach out to us participate in this uh, a webinar we'll tell you more about it the whole team will be there there'll be mentors and we'll tell you how we'll take you forward in that so do reach out we'll send you the link and you can participate in this program right so most welcome and uh, another thing is that uh, we would love to know i can see a lot of you a lot of our students from uh, uh, batches starting 1999 onwards so many students and many friends who are participating uh, if you could uh, click on the google uh, feedback link which sunita has put up and uh, you know just share your experiences with uh, uh, you know how it was in uh, your journey in banjara here uh, we let's all spread the word around tell people that we are here for any type of counseling needs or any type of upskilling uh, uh, you know program so it will be wonderful to hear from you so uh, do uh, click the link mentioned here and uh, share your experiences right so i will hand you over back to ali Hmm. Yes, I'm back, and it is good to see that there are some nice comments uh, or questions that have uh, come up. Let me just align myself. Initially, they were all the good mornings, and then Chandrika says, "How to handle people who complain us in our absence and so nice to us in our presence? Hypocrites! The greatest." epidemic other than loneliness much much worse than any coronas and covids is hypocrisy there are so many people who do that let's accept that they are part of life you will inevitably have a few people around you who are hypocrites that is they complain about us in our absence they criticize us and in front of us they are very nice to uh, us now there are two levels at which we have to handle this one is handling them how to go about it that i will not be dealing with now because that's a topic by itself we uh, you know there are ways and means of dealing with such uh, difficult people but let me tell you how you can ensure that it doesn't affect your mind 
oh, I never realized this one is so sweet to me, but you know, I heard that behind my back, he's saying such nasty things about me and all. Now that can destroy you. And to do that, we come back to the same thing that I was talking to you before the break, and that is that try to insulate yourself, try to get away from those negative uh, um, thoughts. Dealing with the person, we will come to that uh, uh, you know, later. Okay, which is the next. Uh, and Sureka says, earlier I used to say, I shall not allow anybody to ruin my day. Now I say, I shall not allow any thoughts to ruin my day. I don't succeed most of the times, but I feel better in control of my life. And that is the bottom line, beautifully brought to us by Surekha. Don't expect that you will succeed all the time. All these tips that I gave you, you may say, I tried all of them, but the negative thoughts are still coming. But if you really think over a period of time, two things will happen. One is, the intent, the continuity or the repeatability of those thoughts will reduce. You may not even realize it. If it was happening 20 times in a day, it will come down to 15 times in a day. And that is progress. The second thing that will happen is that the effect that those thoughts have on you will slowly start reducing. And that is why an effort, a resolution like what Sureka said, I shall not allow any thoughts to ruin my day. I cannot control the other person who has been nasty to me. I don't have control over that person, but I do have control over my thoughts. And even though you do not succeed most of the time, remember that you have succeeded sometime, and that's good enough. The more you practice, the better will be the uh, things as you go along. Okay. Jay Gauri says, you are giving some really wonderful tips. I'm a practicing counselor qualified from your academy. Your, these sessions make me stronger personally by confirming that I'm on the right path of uh, uh, life. I'm becoming more effective and supportive counselor. Thank you, though I can't thank you. You don't need to thank us so much, uh, Jagari, as you need, need to think about your own self. See, these are what we call as pleasant uh, uh, thoughts, right? That somebody has been nice to me. Some learning has been good. I have worked with a team in Banjara. I have you know, learned a lot from Ali. All these can be converted into positive thoughts, which if you store careful in your memory and next time somebody does something bad to you and some unpleasant thought comes, counterbalance it with these wonderful thoughts that you shared with us just now. Ifat says, how to deal with shrewd people? Let them be shrewd, Ifat. How does it matter to us? The bottom line is, how is that shrewd person affecting my life? Doesn't matter. Maybe we, uh, there's a lot to learn even from shrewd uh, people because I'm not shrewd. I'm a simplistic person. I'm an innocent person. I'm very straightforward. So sometime by being in the company of shrewd people, you can at least learn a few tips which you can use at least on occasions where it is necessary for you to be shrewd just to protect yourself. Secondly, once you have identified and put that label that this person is a shrewd person, immediately tell yourself, now that I know it, I will not allow that person to affect my uh, life. I will protect myself. I will minimize the effect of anything that he does with his wit or his shrewdness or his sarcasm or whatever it is that he is trying to use. Lata says, I allow the negative thoughts to run themselves out by just observing them. I don't do anything about it in that state of mind. Excellent habit, Lata. All of us can incorporate uh, that. Let those thoughts run in your mind. I mentioned it earlier. Don't fight them. Don't get miserable. Why am I thinking of these? It's spoiling my day and I'm doing these, these, these. That's why we did that little role play to start with where Sonal kept on saying that, you know, I will teach that person a lesson. How can that person do this to me? So let that thought, yes, that person has done something horrible to me. It has hurt me very badly. It has affected me. It spoiled this relationship. This is what happened. Okay, let those thoughts roll, 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 and they will pass away. Lakshmi says, I have seen that chanting shlokas and thinking of God has helped me to avoid negative thoughts to overtake my day. This is part of what I mentioned as mindfulness. You can do it in any form. You're a strong believer in God. You start thinking about God. God will never let you down, right? 
so that faith in god and the thoughts of god itself will give you a positive boost it's only human beings who can try to hurt me or be nasty to me but i know that there is a superpower above who can help me and who can take care of me these are the type of things depending on what suits you you start practicing them and continue to practice them even when you are not getting negative thoughts remember that is a very important criteria don't become complacent sometimes life is very smooth very easy very harmonious we tend to become complacent we stop thinking about what how to deal with situations when they go bad surika says how can i feel complete when things people do or they go uh, uh, wrong see it's like this so completeness is within uh, me i know i have identified that things are going wrong or people are doing uh, wrong i am aware of that but whether i am going to be hurt by it and to what extent depends on uh, me somebody very rightly uh, said pain is inevitable misery is choice that same pain can make one person miserable and make another person feel okay i'm going through a bad patch it's very painful i have to tolerate it till the pain goes away and i move on to other things in uh, life shila says same here naam jap helps me a lot too very good divya says sometimes our own family members will do that talking nice in our presence and bitching about yes in fact the closer the people the more they hurt us no some roadside fellow talks behind your uh, back how does it affect uh, you before i was feeling stressed and depressed but now after dcs i am able to channelize my needs and wants that's what i keep on stressing about and i'm glad that divya has picked this up learn to know the difference between your needs and your wants that itself is a very positive step ahead in improving your quality of life vinita says very true sometimes people just pass on their negative thoughts to you but we have to adjust we have to just be strong by not getting affected and by practicing counseling a wonderful talks and learning to me every day yes people will keep passing their negative thoughts look at them as a virus there is flu virus going around there is this cough virus going around Pe- people are getting cold and fever all these viruses they are all floating around isn't it it's up to me firstly how i protect myself against it and secondly what do i do in the form of therapy to Im- increase my immunization against these mental viruses navina says when you get unpleasant thoughts you feel some discomfort in the body yes when i get the awareness first i acknowledge it then communicate to my family take charge of myself do some of the tips which you shared like hug myself pamper myself go for a walk listen to my favorite music and then say to myself it's okay to have such thoughts it will pass and then i shift my thought so that i energize the right kind of thought that's a very nice phrase which you have used navina energize the right kind of thought all these help me a lot to bounce back you must have heard of that uh, proverb which was floating around on the internet the you know the master the guru is telling uh, uh, the shishya that you know there is good there is evil there are positive thoughts there are negative uh, thoughts you are bombarded from two sides they are like you know two jackals who are trying to come and uh, uh, eat uh, one is trying to eat you up and do all sorts of negatives the other one is willing to be a pet and take care of you and protect uh, you the good one and the bad one so the uh, you know the disciple asks the master you know out of these two jackals who wins the master says in very simple terms the one whom you feed isn't it the jackal whom you feed will become stronger and healthier and be able to overcome the other one who will starve so that feeding that controlling of your own thoughts is in your control the next one is from roshan your positive thoughts always attract good people in your life 
making your journey sail smoothly. Having good friends itself can help you feel great. No negativity will ever touch you. Negativity will touch you, Roshan. There will inevitably be some people who are negative, who are jealous, who are hypocrites, as we discussed a little while back. But it is up to you to cherish those good friends, as you mentioned just now. How much importance am I giving to them? How much time am I spending with them? How much more I'm allowing them to influence me rather than these negative people. It's a continuous thing. Let us not get complacent and say that negativity will never touch me. It will. It will make a lot of efforts to try and not only touch you, but to get inside you. It is up to you to keep protecting yourself. Jayashi says, how to deal with life when you live in an environment where you feel hurt? Exactly. What, that's what I was telling you, you know, that pain is is inevitable misery is a uh, choice so i live in an environment where i not only feel hurt but i am being continuously hurt it's not something in the past that i can say okay now i will forgive and i will try to rise above that and this i'm being hurt even today on a regular daily basis because of whoever and whatever they are uh, doing to me again i have to remind myself that they can do anything to my body they cannot do anything to my mind my mind is 100% in my control. And if it is not, I will make these efforts, which I mentioned to you in the first half, to bring my mind under my uh, control. So here I am. Maybe it's my own family members. Or maybe it's my office colleagues. Maybe it's people who are very near and dear uh, to me. But the impact that they have on my mind can definitely be reduced over a period of time. Rima says, many a times we need reminders and positive influences like these to help us to develop to be better at facing different types of challenges in life. That's exactly the reason why I have been going through, as you know, for weeks and months and years now on these type of uh, you know, sessions. Sometimes it may even look repetitive. Sometimes people say that, yeah, yeah I've heard Ali, I have you know, a lot of good things he has said, but now I think I know everything. No, you don't know everything. When I don't know everything, how can you know uh, everything? Every time I have some new thoughts, every time I learn something new from somebody, every time why I look forward to this program is not because of the first half, which I prepare and tell you, but because of the second half, which is a learning to me. All these comments, questions, and suggestions that are coming in from you, know, it is a learning for me. And as long as I am in the process of learning and growth, I will not be pulled down by people who are trying to pull me down or impose negativity in me. Lakshmi says it is said that you cannot heal in an environment which hurts you. How to continue with your passions when there are people who don't want you to uh, succeed? No, I don't 100% agree that uh, uh, you, know, you cannot uh, uh, heal in an environment which hurts you. You can still do it. It will be a slower process. It will be a little more uh, uh, difficult, but you can do it. Remember that even in a negative environment, you can, it'll, you'll have to put in that much extra effort. That's all that you have to do. Lata says sometimes hearing the same thing comes at the right uh, time. Exactly. Sometimes, you know, we know something earlier, but we have never given it sufficient importance. Now, when I sit down in this Saturday webinar and something comes to my mind, Maybe it just triggers off something new in my thought process. And you, based on that, I start doing something which can take me into a better quality of uh, life. Navina says also, it's important when we are stuck and unable to handle to myself, please reach out to a mentor or counselor. It is essential, 100%. Years and years and years have taught me that all of us need mentoring and counseling from time to time. And again, I come back to the same point. Don't look for a counselor when there is a need for a counselor. Have a counselor when life is going smooth. Identify somebody, try out that somebody, maybe discuss some very minor irritants or some small issues and see how was the response of your mentor or counselor. And then stay with that reassurance that tomorrow when something negative happens, like these negative thoughts, somebody has done something or is saying something, which is pulling me down continuously. How will I be able to tackle uh, that? Jagrati says, 
I do agree as negative thoughts put us down, but at times I feel close few chapters in life and move with positive thoughts. That makes me happy. It's a tough job taking control of your brain, but dictating myself do helps. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. The same way as somebody else is dictating a message to you saying you are bad, you are this, I don't like you, you have done this and all that is getting imposed on me. Why don't I strengthen my mind where my own mind starts telling me you are good, you are capable, you are progressive, you are not harming anybody uh, consciously. So develop that counterbalance to what these people uh, say. Ha, Sureka says sadness without suffering. How, Ali? I didn't say sadness, I said pain. Sadness is part of your suffering or your uh, uh, misery. I said pain, be it physical pain or mental pain, that is not in our choice. You may suffer from certain pain. It could be a pain of illness, a pain of loss, a pain of uh, you know, being let down, whatever it may uh, be. But whether that leads to sadness or not, is in our control. How, how do you control your emotions? By controlling your thoughts. The more I gain control over my thoughts. Yes, Gayatri has given a good suggestion, practicing self-love. That's one of the very nice ways of doing it. The more I love myself, the more I'm compassionate towards myself, the more I like myself, the more I enjoy my own company and solitude, the better I will be able to cope with any of these uh, uh, threats. When there is sadness around me, when certain things have happened which have created a vacuum, which have created some very unpleasant thoughts and memories, I can still start the process of rebuilding however bad it has been. Sheila says, four months of DCS and Gita weekly satsang have made me more aware and accepting of myself and people around me. I'm more present and in charge. That's all that we need. I'm glad she has shared that as an experiential thing. It's not she has read somewhere and she's quoting to you. She says that this is what I've done. I've done this. Yes, I've done these things which have helped me. Now, when you see a real life role model in front of you, you get that reassurance that it is definitely possible. But the path to reach that state of mind can be different. What Sheila found as the right path may not be the same for you. You find your own. Try out what XYZ has done. But maybe you will find out something which you have come out with uniquely. Naina says, I have a counselor for me and share even my good moments and happiness with her. Wonderful. That's how it, a counselor relationship should be. This helps me to be in touch and also helps as a reminder to me that I have also experienced good moments. So when I go through a tough time, I can resort to it. See, each one of you is coming out with such simple, basic, but lovely uh, thoughts. Ha, ah, Surekha's question is interesting. How can I challenge negative thoughts? The answer is simple don't. The moment you start, Challenging them, they rise up in challenge, isn't it? If I say something nasty to another person, that person becomes nasty to me. The other day, one of my colleagues was sharing with uh, uh, me that she had parked her car in front of somebody's uh, house by mistake because there was no other place. And that person came very angrily saying, who has parked this car over here? Da, da, da. She gave him a sweet smile and she said, I am the one. I'm extremely sorry I've caused you inconvenience. At that moment, I just couldn't find any other place I parked it. I will see to it that I'll remove it. And that man's jaw fell. He didn't know how to continue his shouting. He didn't know what to say to her. And he said, okay, remove it fast. And he walked off from there. You get me? These are the simple ways by which we allow these things to come in, not challenge them, but actually Work through with them. Try to create that win-win situation is what I am being, uh, uh, you know, emphasizing upon. And I will continue to tell you that you have to do it, you have to practice it, you have to experience it. And then and then only the long-term benefits will come out. Shaida says, I thank all the negative 
thank all the negative thoughts and negative things which happened in my life. Every time it happened, it makes me think that something needs to be changed and it has only helped me grow as a person. What a wonderful way and attitude of life, no? Attitude is the most important thing in life. Like Shahida, if you have this positive attitude which says, I want to learn from these painful experiences. I want to use them as a stepping stone to rise uh, um, higher. Initially, it's very difficult, I admit. It's not that easy to you know, overcome that. But like anything which is difficult, practice ensures that slowly, slowly it becomes easier. Roshan says, I have taken a bold step in my old age. Where, where is your old age, Roshan? I don't see that. Anyway, I've taken a bold step in my old age to do what I'm passionate about. It helps to feel good about yourself and easier to help in each, to reach out to people. Freedom to do what you like gives you freedom to think good or bad. I try my best to think good as it helps in keeping me healthy. Yes. I told you the mind-body connection. The more you think better, the more your body even gets energized. That's something which is very difficult to digest, but you will experience it and you will see if you practice it uh, uh, continuously. And if you do that, like uh, um, Roshan, you will never grow old or also. You will perpetually be uh, young. If it says DCS is one of the best things that happened to me in life, learning so much about life and myself in an intense and simplest way. Thank you. If these are the type of positive strokes which keep us going also and which make us also think very positively about whatever is happening around in life. Even if there is a third wave and a fourth wave, we can still think positively, isn't it? When we start thinking of all these small, small good things that have uh, happened uh, to us. So these are some of the various things. The last uh, point before we wind up, I should not uh, um, forget, that is you will have people who are locked into what we call as a negative uh, mindset. It has become part of their personality. They cannot help being negative and spreading their uh, negative uh, uh, things. They can even at time put pressure on uh, you. You can't change them. Don't even make efforts to rationalize and you know try to change them or try to convince them or advise uh, uh, them. But what you should do is neutralize their toxic outlets. Remember that emotions are contagious. A person who comes to you with nasty emotions, thoughts lead to emotions, right? So negative thoughts, negative experiences, negative incidents obviously lead to the emotions, which I will not call negative, but I will definitely call them unwanted or painful emotions. Now, when these people are spreading these type of uh, you know, emotions onto you, what you need to do is to, what we, I will say, neutralize it. Whenever there is any contagious uh, thing happening, what do you do? You increase your immunity. You increase your overall health. You take some vaccination if that is available. And that is what you need to uh, do from time to uh, time. And that, you know, over a period of time teaches you not only not to have negative thoughts and intrusive thoughts from within you, but also to protect yourself from things which are happening outside. The same way as there are so many people who are you know, what we call as COVID warriors, they are policemen, they are doctors, they are doing so much of good work, social workers, moving around among people, trying to help those who have got COVID, and they are managing to keep their health intact, isn't it? The same thing you can do with your mental uh, health. And as Seema just now uh, has put up on the chat box, we would love to continue to hear. This is just a quick one hour interaction that we um, have every week, but we would like this to con interaction to be on a continuous basis. So one of the avenues is, you know, put down your opinions in that uh, uh, contact that has been uh, given uh, to you. Start off by sharing with us. There's always something or the other that we would like to learn from uh, you. And we will continue to do that learning. And after learning a little more, we will be back next Saturday 
with a very very different and a very unique but a very important topic and seema will put up that topic right now on the chat box which is so intriguing to me because though i don't have a nasty boss i keep dealing with people day in and uh, uh, day out you know how people deal with uh, people in authority people who are bosses people who you know uh, can have a control over uh, you and that is what will help you to move on and face even the most difficult situations in uh, uh, life so thank you very much and see you again next saturday bye bye